Hey guys, what's up? Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles. Welcome back to Sonic Academy. And today I want to find out how well you guys know what your plugins are actually doing to your audio. We're going to do this by showing you a simple little test that you can set up and it's called a null test. Let's check this out. So the premise of the null test uh, with digital audio, you've basically got positive values uh, for your peaks and troughs on negative values for a waveform. Uh, so what happens is when you duplicate that and you flip the phase, you're essentially turning all the negative values into positive values and vice versa. So when you add the two waveforms back together again, you should actually cancel everything out. You get zero and you won't hear a thing. So this is super simple to set up uh, in Cubase. We're just gonna duplicate our channels. I've got a uh, test tone signal, just a sine wave here that we're going to look at. And then I've just got a drum loop in here as well. So to do this, we're just going to take the second, the duplicate channel, and in the pre-section, this will vary from DAW to DAW, but you should all have the ability to do this. Just hit the phase invert button here on the pre-section. Uh, we'll do the same for the drum loop. And when we solo this, you can hear the loop playing. When we unsolo that and we play back both of the waveforms at the same time, we have no signal whatsoever. They are effectively canceling each other out. So this comes in handy when we start to add processes to the duplicated version here. Uh, because any changes that you make to the audio here is going to result in a different waveform and they won't be canceling each other out then. So I'm going to start off with something like uh, Isotopes Neutron. Now this is built as a sort of surgical mixing tool. So we really shouldn't be hearing any changes here by default. And that is the case. It is completely nulled. Uh, you'll hear when you start adding things like EQ. You're now hearing the difference between the two signals. So in this case, you do actually have a band solo. This can be pretty useful in the case of EQ, uh, where you can actually solo bands without having a band solo function at all. And it allows you to easily hear what you are doing uh, when it comes to EQing. That is essentially what you're adding to the audio in this case. So let's get out of the EQ. I'm interested in looking at multiband to start off with. Uh, so we've discussed multiband uh, phase issues before. If you check out the problems with side chaining video that I've done recently, I mentioned that you shouldn't side chain in multiband if you can help it, because uh, it can cause issues in the low end. So I've got the compressor running here now. You can hear the compressor kicking in if you dial in some of the threshold. That is essentially what the compressor is doing to your audio. Uh, let's dial this into multiband mode and we're going to play this back and it's completely nulled. So this is a good thing. Uh, it means that the filters, the crossover filters that Isotope is using for Neutron are 6 dB filters. Now 6 dB filters, you can get away with having them completely nulled. There's no issues to the phase at all. Uh, now I'm going to give you a different example. Let's bring in the multiband compressor from Vengeance Audio. Now there's no compression happening here at all. Uh, so we shouldn't have anything. If we select the simple 6 dB, it should be nulled. And that is the case. You're not hearing any differences. But watch what happens when I change the crossover filters to a 12 dB slope. We'll play that back. So you can hear, even with no compression happening, there's major differences happening between the original audio and the phase flipped version. And this is where issues with phase come in. You can hear as I sort of start sweeping these crossover points around the difference that it makes to the sound. Notice how at certain points the bass tends to almost drop out. Uh, that is from phase issues. We can go all the way up to a 96 dB, which is quite extreme. That's where you're gonna be having the most of the, the phase problems occurring. So you can hear why you should stay away from 
multiband compression with high filter slopes like this, uh, it can cause major issues, especially down in the low end for you. What's interesting with this plugin is it has a dry, wet, or mix knob here. So theoretically speaking, dialing this back to zero should cause the plugin to have no effect on the audio at all. Let's try that out. And in fact, it's having no effect on the phase issues that are being caused by having this 96 dB filter slope in there. Uh, so this tells you that the audio is actually being passed through the crossovers first before it reaches the uh, dry, wet knob here. This is in fact changing the amount of compression per band, but it has no effect on the actual crossovers. So it's just interesting to do these tests to kind of work out the structure of how the plugin is working and what it's actually doing to your audio when you're running this in a project. So that's interesting to see. We're going to dive into another multiband compression tool, and that's OTT, which a lot of you will know. Now, this is not to say that you shouldn't use OTT. I think it's a valuable tool as a sound design thing, but it's interesting to hear just how damaging this can be to your audio as well. We'll play this back and we hear the, the compression that's happening, and it is actually compressing the audio in this case. You can hear there's loads of artifacts and weird compression happening there, but watch what happens when we dial the depth back down. We'll turn all the upward and downward compression off. Still major, major differences happening between the two uh, pieces of audio. So this is definitely not the kind of tool that you want to stick on your master. It just has too much effect uh, that is out of your control, uh, and you can't actually get it to a point where it's not affecting the audio. So just be aware of plugins like this. They do have quite a large impact on uh, the audio when you are using them. So there's a couple of other interesting ways that you can use this null test as well. Another one that I quite like to do is to run EQs on these, specifically analog modeled EQs. So when you're talking about analog modeled EQs, they often have a sort of inherent tone modeled from the hardware. So they're not like Neutron where you just have a bland digital EQ that is surgical and doesn't make any other changes. Uh, for example, we'll take the Mag EQ. Right off the bat, you can hear there's small changes happening there. What's interesting with this one is if we use this air band, uh, we'll set it to 40 kilohertz and dial up the air band on this. Notice that it's apparently not just the high frequencies kicking in there. There is a lot of high frequencies happening there, but it's actually pulling up some of the bass as well on top of that. Now, this is just the way that the hardware works, but it's good to be able to visualize that and understand what the EQ is actually doing. Uh, another good example is a Poltec EQ. I'll use the um, EQP1A from IK Multimedia. And listen to that without any boosting or attenuation going on at all. And you can hear that extra uh, warmth and sub that it's adding into this without any of the uh, EQ being dialed in. So this immediately tells me, you know, this is the kind of EQ that I would grab on sort of bass or even on a master if I wanted to get a little bit more sort of weight in the bottom end. Uh, this would be a good one to turn to. Uh, we can take a listen to the boost and attenuation as we dial that in. So more boost, we'll attenuate as well. So even with the attenuation turned all the way up, there's still some of that weight and sub coming through at the bottom as well. So just a really good tool to help you actually understand your EQ palette, uh, especially when it comes to these um, analog modeled ones. Another interesting one for me was the uh, Bax EQ from Dangerous Music. This one, in fact, does cancel out completely uh, when you are running them at zero. Obviously, as soon as you start boosting, you can hear changes being made. But it's nice to know that this one at zero is actually not going to affect your sound at all. So it's a pretty clean EQ that you can use in mastering purposes and such. So another interesting one that I want to look at quickly is an auto pan. Uh, I use Panman quite a bit, I have done so in the past. Uh, so you should hear the left and right changes happening when you push play now, and you do there. 
but again, theoretically speaking, if you turn the width down to minimum, you shouldn't actually be hearing any differences at all. But when we play this back, there's definitely something going on there. So if you head into the tweak uh, page, uh, this does actually add some extra drive to the sound as well. We have these different models. And you can hear the effects being uh, being added in there. What I find interesting with this one though is the clean setting in Pan Man is actually not clean. When you have that set to clean, we play that back. There's still some saturation happening in that. So that's good to know as well that that actually does change your sound more than just the, the auto pan effect that you have. Uh, the Cubase auto pan as well, while this doesn't add in any saturation, when this is turned down to zero width as well, there's still some change in volume happening by using this plugin uh, that's causing the two uh, audio signals to not cancel each other out. Consequently, I've actually started moving to uh, something like ShaperBox 2 for auto panning now. Once again, you can hear the left to right kicking in there. If we set this to a straight line, which would be no panning at all, play that back it phase cancels. So this one you know for a fact is just adding the change between the left and the right. That's all it's doing. You can hear that happening as you draw in. And once again, coming back to the sidechain video, uh, this one allows you to do multiband processing. There you won't have any phase cancellation because the default is the 6 dB. If we set that to 12, we'll hear some uh, issues coming in with that filter setup there or the crossover setup. Cool, so let's jump into a few other examples. I want to take a look at our test tone that we have here. Another cool thing you can do with this is see what saturation plugins are doing to your audio. So we'll jump in here and drop in an instance of twin tube, for example. You'll be able to see some of the extra harmonics being added in here but it's a lot easier to sort of hear the differences. Now you will get a bit of boost on the root frequency as well. So you'll hear a bit of that, but it'll be drastically reduced as opposed to just adding this on a single track. And then you can kind of hear more of a focus on the upper harmonics being added. So you'll see without any processing, bypass that, they are canceled. Without any processing, there's a little bit of upper harmonics being added. Let's turn up the saturation. That's the original sound. That's what's being added when you run the null test. Uh, another good example of this is Sound Toys Decapitator. This one has a number of different uh, models inside of Decapitator. So again, if you just have this set to zero, there's a little bit of harmonics being added there. Uh, we're gonna drive this one a little bit. And now flick through the different modes so you can really kind of focus on what this is actually doing uh, and what each mode really sounds like, what it can add to your audio. So just a great way to kind of get to know the sound of a lot of these plugins. It just helps you to make more informed decisions when it comes to adding these plugins into your mix as to what they're actually doing to the sound. Uh, the last thing I wanted to look at uh, is also a form of distortion. It's a tool that I use quite often to just clip transients off. We're going to open up an, issue, uh, an instance of standard clip. So clippers are kind of like a limiter, uh, except instead of pulling the volume down uh, quite abruptly, they actually just cut it off, essentially causing distortion. Uh, now this one's just interesting to hear the difference because it can be quite... Uh, jarring distortion that it adds. This can be useful in some cases because it can make a sound a little bit more brittle and a little bit louder, uh, but you need to be aware of certain frequencies as well. So I'll just play this to you so you can hear what's happening. It's nulled now, and as we start dragging down the threshold, take a listen to what's going on. So yeah, as those transients get in there, those artifacts that start coming out, it's just digital distortion occurring there. Watch what happens when I pull this down and the kick drum starts getting pushed through the clipper. It's 
quite an unpleasant distortion effect that. Uh, so, I, like I said, I use this quite often in sort of higher frequency content, uh, especially on percussion stuff, just to trim off some of the small, small transients and give yourself a little bit more headroom when it comes to compressing stuff later on in the track. Uh, but you do want to be aware of what you're adding this to, because as you can hear, as soon as that kick comes through, it all just kind of falls apart and you get that really nasty digital distortion occurring. Cool, so that's the gist of setting up a null test. It's a very simple process to do and really informative when you run these little tests in your spare time, just to kind of, uh, like I said, you know, help you make more informed decisions when you're using plugins in your projects and help you just understand the sound that's inherent within them and what they're doing to your audio. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will catch you soon right here at Sonic Academy. See you then. Cheers. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video, then smash a like. And if you want to be notified about new videos, hit the subscribe and notification buttons. Peace.